this next book is one more attempt uh, in my effort to catch up in being what I wanted to be at one time, but never really got to be, which was a literature major. Ended up doing physics and philosophy instead. But um, always have sort of felt uh, self-conscious about my uh, knowledge of, of theory, um, as especially literary cultural theory. And of course, one of the most uh, famous names in, uh, in that field is uh, Terry Eagleton. And uh, this video is going to be a review of Terry Eagleton's book, After Theory. Um, being a theorist, um, cultural or literary or anything else, uh, can be intimidating if you're doing it um, after the impressively productive years of the 1960s and 70s. These were the acme years uh, for people like uh, Jürgen Habermas, uh, Jacques Derrida, Pierre Bourdieu, uh, uh, Foucault, Lyotard, uh, Rorty, Frederick Jameson, and, and many other people who played a major role in completely reshaping what theory means inside and outside of academic discourse. Uh, in this book, After Theory, Eagleton confronts a world where many of these people's ideas which were once considered very controversial, are now practically de rigueur. Uh, he also shows himself to be a very different thinker than the one I had always assumed him to be. Uh, his socialism, and perhaps even his Marxism, uh, hasn't really abated. Uh, but for some reason, I always had him pegged as a staunch postmodernist, post-structuralist. Uh, but after reading this book, that's not at all where he is which sort of surprised me. Um, the structure of the book is a little confused and unfocused, and that's my biggest criticism of it. Uh, the first half consists of uh, basically descriptions about the birth of postmodern theory, uh, and, but he really sort of gives you no idea of, of, of the driving force behind where he's trying to go and what he's trying to ultimately tell you. Uh, maybe he's trying to spell out some basic uh, postmodern assumptions, which he does, um, like it, you know, the, the basic ones, the deep distrust of grand narratives, distrust of the idea of truth and objectivity, and an overt focus on culture, which wasn't there in uh, earlier modernism. Uh, the second half quickly becomes focused and much more razor sharp. Uh, he comes out to defend the idea of truth and objectivity, and uh, perhaps most importantly, the uh, morality and ethics as theoretical and philosophical pursuits. He, he supports those very much. And he makes these ideas uh, very brilliantly because he shows them uh, by juxtaposing them with postmodernism, how if you think these things that postmodernism thinks, then how postmodernism itself cannot be true. So it basically uh, shows them to be uh, internally inconsistent, and which is of course the best way to um, show how arguments fail. Uh, you know, to pick a very very easy example, um, if if truth didn't exist, then neither could the statements of postmodernism, which they consider to be true. Therefore, postmodernism itself is something we must be skeptical about. Um, and he ends by saying that postmodernists have had a bad history of associating these things, uh, narratives, narratives, truth, objectivity, morality, uh, ethics, uh, with fundamentalism. But he makes a wonderful and very commonsensical uh, argument, saying that you can believe in truth and objectivity without being a a fundamentalist of the religious type. Um, if you're even somewhat familiar with the overall shape that theory has taken over the last 50 years or so, and have serious, uh, serious doubts about some of its claims, uh, you've probably thought about some of the things that Eagleton talks about here. No, I certainly have, and <laughs> sort of uh, think about them quite often, and uh, sort of have my doubts about them but I always return to theory because I find it so, um, 
so enriching, not just for literature, but for anthropology and sociology and psychology and a lot of other things. Um, I just wish I was able to articulate those concerns and those problems as adeptly as he does in this book. Uh, there's one major gripe that I have with the book. Um, some of his pronouncements about American leaders and American foreign policy seem really um, grossly strident and out of place, uh, especially considering the, the subject of the book. Um, you know, I know that Terry Eagleton is, you know, a socialist and, and, and a leftist, uh, the kind that you really don't see here in the United States. Um, but it seems like the, uh, the political commentary, whether you disagree with it or not, you know, I'm certainly not saying I disagree or agree, but it seems just out of place and a little bit embarrassing in a book that was about something so totally different from all of that. Um, you know, it, that and just the bumbling start at the beginning of the book, he, he takes about, I'd say, 80 or 100 pages to actually find his voice, and then he actually gets a, a, a good roll on and sort of, you know, really starts establishing his points well. But if you stick with it to the second half of the book or so, he actually does getting around to, make, to making some really interesting points that uh, make you scratch your head and uh, think twice about this theory, which, um, you know, is, is full of stuff that uh, otherwise intelligent people seem to hold so uncritically, which is a little surprising from time to time. Thought-provoking. After Theory by Terry Eagleton.